just uh, restart my kernel, just did a really bad action there. Right, so in this video I'm going to explain for loops. I've already explained more or less what a loop is and a while loop is, but we'll go back over what a loop is in Python and I'll talk about a while loop, but I won't show them. We're just covering for loops today. So a loop in Python is, let's, let's imagine you have a piece of code and you want to execute it. Um, a number of times, let's say I want to execute a piece of code 500 times, that would be a for loop. So what a loop does, it, it executes up until um, something makes it terminate. So in a while loop, there's a condition that is true. And while that condition is true, certain actions will be performed. Okay. In a for loop, we can define how many times we want to perform that action. And once we performed an action a certain amount of times, the loop ends. So for example, let's say I want to print the word Dave. And I want to do it five times. Okay. I can say four times in range zero to five. Oops, I've done it again, Anna. Right, I need to put that range in there. This print actually has to be indented or it won't be part of the loop. So I have to indent it there. And if we run that, we should get a printout of Dave five times. So in the first time, it's range zero, range one, range two, range three, range four. Okay, and how I can prove that is by also printing range number is plus times well we'll actually put the string of times str what am i doing here i am just butchering everything okay str of times and you'll see range number is zero one two three and four so when we use this range here in our for loop it'll execute the first number up until the last number but it's not inclusive of five so it'll go in range zero two five exclusive of five so zero one two three four five but if you keep zero as the first number and five as the last number it will do it this amount of times the last number amount of times okay in a for loop so a for loop essentially allows you to do something x amount of times okay let's say i don't know we want to double a number several times okay number doubled equals one okay we'll say for doubling in range zero to seven print num doubled times two and then we make num doubled equal to num doubled times two and this will essentially double this one seven times okay so it'll be seven doubling what 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 do you mean it's not declared where's it not declared num double is absolutely declared there we are so that's six times so the first time sorry seven times the first time there second time third time fourth time fifth time sixth time seven times one has been doubled there okay now I knew I wanted to double it one time, seven times, so I can do that. Another cool thing about this is we can print, for example, all the items in the list. So we'll make a list, we'll call it list x equals three, seven, eight, nine. We'll say for item in list x, print item so list x we print the item three seven and eight and nine now 
what you'll have noticed here is I haven't put range. So when you ask for every item or I inside of a list or some some kind of like container like this, it could be a dictionary, it could be anything. Uh, item is actually equal to the value of each item iterated. So the first value doesn't start at zero, it starts at three, uh, and then it becomes seven and eight. So if you, for example, want to change this item, uh, and you want item is equal to nine, for example, list X hasn't changed, okay? And the reason why that hasn't changed is because you actually have to change the index of list of, of, of list x. So item here is just a temporary name for a new variable. And we're not actually printing uh, this, we're printing a variable copy of this. So if we actually wanted to change an item at an index, we'd have to put for item in range zero to length of list x this way we can actually get the length of the list and this will iterate from zero to there so if we print item now we'll actually get uh this is of length four so we should get zero one two and three like that so here it actually prints out index because we've used range and if we now want to replace every item in list x with that, we can use list x item is equal to 9. Okay. So list x, every item is equal to 9. So essentially what I'm saying is if you use the in range method, you get essentially a bunch of indexes and the value of item or the value of whatever variable you assign before in will be um, equal to whatever iteration you're in, whatever n whatever loop number you're in, essentially, of the range zero to whatever the last number is. Okay, but if you use a for loop and you use for item in a list or you know any kind of container. It, the value of item won't be the value of the index of the container. It will actually be the value of the item at the index of the iteration. So if item is uh, the item of index number two, the value will be eight rather than the index value of two. So this doesn't give you an index number. This actually returns the item, uh, the element in the list. So you have to be careful with that because you'll actually get an out of range index. For example, if I actually print uh, the first item here, so list x zero is the first item, okay? If I say, um, for example, for item in list x, list, x item is equal to 99 this should actually have a out of bounds yeah it's out of range of the index so what it's saying is we're here what's what's the value of item actually here the value of item here is nine so i'm actually asking for index number nine of list x here there is no index nine the last index is actually free. So this is why it's relevant to know the difference between uh, your four statements. But otherwise, you know, you can use them to change items in a list or you can use them to go for a specific range. So let's say, for example, I don't know, I want to make a list. Let's call it list new a thousand tens is equal to an empty list and I want this list to have a thousand tens in it I can say for uh, I in range and I kind of means iteration I think one to a thousand list underscore new underscore a thousand underscore tens dot append 
10. And what this will actually do, oops, that's a minus sign and not an equal sign, this will append 10 to this list a thousand times. So that list will be a list of a thousand tens. Okay. And if I print that list, list new a thousand tens, you'll actually see that this has a thousand tens in it. I mean, it might not show the whole thousand tens here in this uh, console, but it does have a thousand tens in it. There you go, plenty of tens. So essentially, this for loop here has appended the value 10 to this list a thousand times. One time for every i in the range zero to a thousand. Okay, and yeah, that's essentially it. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed. I'll go over this a lot more in the practice video, but this is just the basics of making it for now.